So it's been a busy day today. I've returned to Jake Jackson and my template in anticipation of the BBC SO release. In fact, I've been doing all sorts of announcements and video content in smart shirts and stuff for that very thing. But I rolled up my sleeves or put my T-shirt on to take it to the, I think, penultimate stage of the template. So I just wanted to take you through the different upgrades that I've done uh, to that. And also, if you stick around till later on, there's some help that I'm going to request from you, not only Logic users, but also maybe if there's any theoricians out there or people who know uh, music and uh, notation theory, uh, I'm going to reach out for some help. First, I got something really saucy to show you. So first thing I wanted to do was to upgrade these. Now I reached out to the guys at Spitfire Audio and they sent me all of the icons, but they sent me ones with, if we have a look here, transparent backgrounds, but in a happy accident, when you put them in, they actually look rather cool. What I've discovered, if you lasso them and then grab your cheeky little whistle on, it does them all, which is deeply satisfying. Let's do the flutes. <sighs> So here's one I prepared earlier. Great stuff and good work from the guys at Spitfire HQ. There's also an observation of uh, uh, something that Jake and I had set up that uh, a very good friend of ours, Stephen, felt that it wasn't quite right. So he's made us this little video of a tweak that he's made to his template. So I was keen to use this template for an upcoming project. And there was a couple of things I thought were missing from the overall way in which I'd want to use it. So one of the main ones is really to have some buses to be used as a mix and then a master. So what I want to do is instead of sending those to the stereo out, I'm going to send them to a bus. So let's just select them all. And I'm going to send these all to bus 100, which is going to be my mix bus. Uh, we've now got a lovely AUX 100, which I'm going to call mix. And then I'm going to send that instead of the stereo. Out, I'm also going to send that to its own bus as well, which is going to be my master bus. So now we've got master. Um, and then what I can do is I can take the mastering utilities that Jake put on the stereo output and I'm going to move those across to the mix. And so everything that comes into this channel will then go through those mastering and then forward as the master and then to the stereo out. Then I'm going to use this to send to my headphone and see I've got my phone's output um, and I'm just going to drag up this to zero. And then the other part then is then to have a print for the OST as Jake and Christian called it. And what I want to be able to do is print both of these, the mix and the mastered versions. So what I'm going to do here, steal one of the print tracks. So this one here, control D to duplicate it. And this is just going to be called print OST. And we only need two of these stems. So I'm just going to delete those two there. And I'm just going to call this one mix and this one master. So if I want to print out a, a mix version that hasn't been mastered to send it off to a mastering engineer, I can do that. Or I can just have the mastered version, which I might then listen to in the car or provide as a, an early version. And then we need to wire up the, the mix and the master to the right buses for their inputs. So we want the mix to be coming from 100 and the master to be coming from 101. The last bit that I thought was a bit missing was each of these stacks could do with an initial instrument inside of them with a bit of routing set up, even if they're just blank, because otherwise it makes it a bit hard to get going with it. And if you've already got one instrument in each of those tracks, you can then just control D duplicate that as you do. So and we're going to create a new software instrument track and then we'll just put that at the top and then we're just going to go through each of these so I'll show you doing that and I'll also add in the icons and fix all the colors and so what you might have noticed that for the extra stems so stem six and seven I've put in a blank instrument and then for stem eight I've put in an audio track so that if you want to be recording it's kind of handy to have those two stems that way so the only thing I now need to do is fix up the routing for these so I'm just going to route each one of these instruments to the long aux for each one that's kind of arbitrary but it's just so I've got something so this track has gone to bus 10 which is the the stack and really what I want it to do is go across here to bus 16 
And so if I test that now, the light will light up. Yeah, so we can see here that's routing through to the correct output. So that is great. So we're just going to do the same thing all the way through on all of these tracks now. And so this means that if I want to start from scratch from this template, all I need to do if I want more woodwind channels, just control D and they'll already be rooted up. I obviously, if I'm going to use a short or so on, I can I can switch that over and I can come in and change these to be contact or whatever I want it to be. So let's have a little try now at importing one of my existing templates into this new shiny ones. So if I pick from here one of my existing projects and we'll see that I've got a whole bunch of stuff from this previous template. So we could see there's there's a whole load of channels here from the other template, but I only care about the ones that have got any content. Going to go and add and they've all gone under the key stack in this case. If I had a lot more tracks, then I would probably select the stack, select the instruments and then import it that way. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to move these down into the strings section. So they're in the strings stack and you can see they're automatically getting rooted. So I'm going to move them to the shorts bus. And then you can see I've got some delay and some reverb on these channels. So I'm going to take the reverb. I'm going to stick it in here so we'll get rid of this one. And because I've got a delay, I'm going to go and stick that on FX1. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shorts and I'm going to, going to send that to reverb one and then do the same uh, for the delay on 53. And that should now all be sounding pretty much the same. So Jake, if you're watching this, I'd love to hear your views on that and whether we should incorporate that into this template. I haven't altered it yet because that's more your kind of department. But what I have been looking at is the instruments themselves. Something a lot of you requested was that the default mix wasn't in fact the tree, but was mix one. So basically every single instance of BBC SO has the tree up full, but off, and the mix up full but on. So easy to switch between those if you have a preference. I wonder if it's worth me asking the likes of Andy Blaney whether there's a kind of mix that he prefers in general and have that all activated, all prepared, but off so people can just easily switch those on. Um, let me know in the comments down below if that is of interest to you. The rest of the template setup that I've been doing is based on frustrations I've had over the years of poor template hygiene, of not thinking about the very final bit of preparation, and that is preparing scores within Logic, which I tend to do for what I refer to as under and overdub. So things that I record before orchestral sessions and things that I record after. And there's so many of those little minutes that if I spent that creating the template, then I would save hours and hours at the other end, namely score preferences. So let's have a look at some of the global score settings. Something that I've done is made it a maximum of eight bars per line and per part. I've also zeroed the pedal position because if you use the sustain pedal, and I'm an utter sustained tart, you find that uh, you just get, get pages covered with uh, pedal markings. Uh, numbers and names. Right, so I've got full names here, but also you can do other stuff, short names, except I don't know where to put those short names in. Can someone please let me know in the comments down below. The other thing that I've done is a bar number above every stave. And what I've done is I think they're not quite high enough, actually. I still think they're going to interfere with the uh, instructions that you put above. Um, I think that uh, just lifted them slightly higher off the stave. I then went into stave, the staff style window, and I've reduced all of the staffs that we're using down to five whatever that is five points or whatever it is again just to get more on the page right here's another point where i might need help what i've also done now annoyingly you can't just grab all the piccolos and make that staff style piccolo so i've had to go through every single one and i'm just wondering if if i just quickly scroll through could you tell me that i have the correct transpositions it's great i've um, been using this book for I don't know, 20 odd years, and I never realized it has this 
awesome appendix page, which is basically a cheat sheet for the whole orchestra, which is fantastic. So if you own this book and you haven't seen this, uh, go to page, I think, 786, and you'll get an amazing appendix. So anyway, I've been cross-checking this, and I just want to check that I'm doing the right things here. Namely, so if you just keep an eye as I scroll through on this. Uh, oh, there's, there's a wrong one. Main question here is cor anglais. Is that horn in F? So is it does it transpose the same as a horn? Clarinets, do they trump, uh, transpose the same as a trumpet? B flat. Bass clarinet, I've created a bass clarinet style, which is bass clef and down uh, two steps. Uh, contra bass uh, clarinet is I've used the bass clarinet. So then let's carry on to bassoons. Is it contra bass? The setting there for the contrabassoon, just making wild presumptions here. So let's have a look at the brass. Horn, horn in F. I'll just stroll, scroll through and again, let me know in the comments if I've made any foul ups. Much appreciated. And then, oh, these iCat cons look absolutely stunning. Strings, uh, this is much more straightforward. There we go. Now I'm applying some of my uh, methodology to the template uh, in the hope that this is helpful to people. But I just basically have a policy that every single cue I do starts from bar five. By having protocols like this, it means the cross-checking is that much easier. So we have a bit of pre-roll, then we wake the conductor up with this, and then it's count him in one, two, three, he counts the band in, and you're in on five. So you'll see that I've set as a default bar five to be the first position with a symptom position of 01. When you output MIDI files, it will mean that your MIDI file from bar, your tempo from bar one will default to 120 regardless of, of how you change this here. It's important that when you're basically setting cue points for cues that you don't have a tempo event here. So I'll show you why. Because if you then change the start point here, you'll get all sorts of muckiness there. So as a default, don't have anything there. And I just, when I'm doing technical preparation, adding a point in here so it doesn't muss up the MIDI files is just something that I add into a flowchart. So currently the sync plop is just coming out of its own out of the output but I think it might be useful to set some wiring up so that that sync plop goes to maybe some of the stems Jake maybe you know of which stems it should be maybe bus to but with the, the bus switched off if you know what I mean because again this is a, a good fail safe device one of the big things that I get very nervous about in dubs is stems slipping out and to be able to give them a, a visual audible kind of clue it's not just because they're all lining up because that's when the file starts I think to actually give them that convincing well there's a plop there that's basically that all needs to be synchronized is a useful thing so next step I'm going to send this to Jake Jake's going to consider Stephen's idea and just double check all of the busing we're both going to start writing the manual so please RTFM and take on board any other suggestions that you may have please put them in the comments below and I will read all of the comments as I'm sure Jake will too I'll then return and uh, make sure that we've basically got the latest release candidate of BBC SO in we'll do our different stripped out versions so there's going to be three BBC SO versions one with a track per articulation one with this kind of slightly hybrid thing where it's tracks per articulation style and then one which will just be all in ones it'll be interesting to see what the memory footprint for those three different systems will be so thanks in advance for your comments down below thanks as always for watching if you haven't subscribed yet well it's an exciting time for Spitfire and for our community so be well worth doing ding that bell the notification bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up and one of those for Stephen's very valid feedback would be great see you soon